As human beings, we're set up for loss. We're built to grieve. We lose the normal stages of grief, which have been well documented over the last several decades, include the following. Anger, denial, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. Grief is a period of time spent adjusting to the loss. Those stages I just mentioned can occur in any order. We move in and out of the stages. We repeat the stages. Not everyone experiences all of the stages. There's no rules. There's no rule book. Everyone does it differently, and grief is a very personal process. That's important to remember. I'm going to say it again. Grief is very personal. Everyone does it differently, and every grief is unique. So one person might experience grief one way when they lose one person and an entirely different way when they lose somebody else. Normal bereavement, and I'll say that again, normal bereavement includes a whole variety of symptoms. Those include feelings of shock and sadness, numbness, yearning for the lost person, severe fatigue, insomnia, dreams, nightmares, lots of agitation, guilt, self-blame. But the common denominator of normal grief is ultimately an acceptance of the new reality. That doesn't mean we like it. It doesn't mean it's comfortable, but there is an acceptance that ultimately comes into play. So what happens when this is not the case? Sometimes the grieving person is completely unable to move through the grief process. And acceptance doesn't occur even after a really long period of time. They get stuck in any one of the stages of grief, very often depression. So what do we call this when someone gets stuck in this way? We call this complicated bereavement. We are really focused on the loss to the exclusion of other interests or people with this complicated bereavement are generally incapacitated by their grief to the point of being unable to um, participate in, uh, in their lives um, and they're incapacitated they are completely unable to accept the loss and they feel unable to move on from the loss. And a lot of times what happens is people feel really guilty and almost like uh, moving on from the loss or accepting the loss is a betrayal of the lost person, of the deceased person. One of the criteria for this diagnosis is that these symptoms have been going on for at least six months. Most concerning of all, is a general desire to join the deceased, which obviously becomes suicidal thoughts or ideation, and sometimes even a plan for suicide. Other symptoms of complicated bereavement can include the following, a preoccupation with the circumstances surrounding the death, difficulty trusting other people, difficulty trusting in the world, detachment or isolation, wanting to be alone all the time, persistent feelings of loneliness and emptiness, a negative view of the world, lots of ruminations about death, recurrent thoughts that life as a whole has become meaningless, hallucinations, seeing or hearing the loved one, or experiencing the pain that um, this, the deceased one might have suffered toward the end of life. Prolonged grief and complicated bereavement has been associated with suicidal ideation, suicide attempts, and increased risk for a variety of medical problems, including cancer, cardiac events, immune disorders, and other issues. In general, about a fifth to a third of people who have experienced grief are at risk for developing their lifetime. That's pretty significant. Some risk factors that 
put you at higher risk for a complicated as opposed to normal bereavement or having had a previous mood disorder. High stress levels in your life at the time of a bereavement. Low social support. Certain personality characteristics. Having a generally negative attitude. And having lost someone to violent death, such as murder or suicide. There are numerous other risk factors. And I've most significantly are having had an emotionally dependent relationship on the deceased and losing a loved one in the hospital. There seems to be a relationship between death in a hospital and the development of a complicated bereavement disorder. This is particularly important looking at particularly important looking at hospice care. So treatment. What can we do? It turns out there's a lot that we can do to prevent this from happening, or if it does happen, to help people to recover. First of all, um, medication, including antidepressants, can be very helpful. Oftentimes when people have developed a complex bereavement disorder, they have actually developed a depression on top of the grief, and that depression should be treated. This requires evaluation by a professional for the appropriateness of such medications. Psychotherapeutic techniques such as cognitive behavioral therapy can be enormously helpful in this situation. Group support and particularly supportive and grief therapy. There are many groups that provide this sort of therapy. This can be very helpful. These types of groups are particularly helpful and many are available for teens and children who have lost a loved one, especially if they have lost a, a primary member of their family, a parent or a sibling. How can you best help yourself if you have lost someone and are experiencing a grief process, whether normal or a more complicated bereavement process? First, acknowledge your pain. It's very important to allow yourself to be sad or whatever feelings you might be having to allow them to happen. Accept that grief can trigger lots of complicated emotions, not all of them sadness, some of them paradoxical, some of them numbness, anger, relief, all kinds of feelings. None of them are wrong. All of them are valid. Be okay with the fact that everyone grieves differently and your grief is unique. Take good care of yourself physically, emotionally, psychologically. Make that a priority in your life during this time. Seek out people who love you. If you ever need someone, this is the time in your life when you need those people. Allow your feelings to roll over you in waves uh, like t like the tide. This is really how grief works. It comes and it goes. It comes and it goes in pieces that you can tolerate. Allow it to come and it won't drown you. Know the signs of complex bereavement as I went over them in this video. Know what they are and seek help if you need it. Give yourself time. All the time you need. Grief is not laid out in a certain order and it is not time limited. You will get to acceptance if you give yourself the time to heal. Breathe. Thank you for listening. This is Psych Talk. I'm Dr. Schwartz. If you like this video, remember, please like it and subscribe. Thank you for listening.